Today I'm going to hand cut some dovetails for the first time and I'm going to do them two different ways, once with a jig and once without a jig. In case you aren't aware yet, the Builders Challenge is starting this week. Not only is it a competitive challenge where you can win amazing prizes, it's also an opportunity where you can challenge yourself and hone your skills. So one of the amazing sponsors for this season is my friend Jonathan Katz Moses. He is the inventor of that amazing stop lock that I've been using on my latest videos. And he also invented this pretty cool dovetail jig. So for this season's challenge, I decided to learn how to hand cut some dovetails. And the first step that I took in that process was to go watch Jonathan's Essential Dovetail Guide video. And I'm going to use that video as a guide for everything that I'm doing here. So definitely go check that video out. I will link it down below. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first thing that I did off camera was I just milled up two pieces of wood that are the same width and I have total faith in this Katz Moses dovetail jig that I'm going to test my first dovetails on some walnut and poplar. So um, I actually cut two of these. One I'm going to use with the jig, one I'm going to use without the jig, and I did the same species so that I can see the difference between the two. So what's just really important about these pieces is that they are all really square, and to make sure that these this is square also, uh, because then your joinery will be square if everything starts off square. All right, so I'm gonna put one of these aside. I'm gonna do that later, and I'm gonna use the one for the jig first. The first thing to do is to, you know what, the first thing I will do is to mark out tails and pin. I'm going to get the thickness of my pin board and go all the way around. So the first tip from Jonathan's video is to create a rabbit on the inside face of the tails board. That way when you're lining up for your pins, there's a little lip that the piece of wood will register against and it will be easier to mark out for your pins. So he did this on the table saw by taking multiple passes with a single blade or a dado blade and then cleaned it up with a shoulder plane. I am going to do something a little bit different just because I like to experiment. I'm gonna to try to do this on the router table. All right, so I have a three quarter inch bit here and I raised it so that it's like not even a 16th. And now I'm going to adjust the fence so that the tip of the bit is lined up with that marking gauge line. I'm gonna use push blocks and a backer board because this is going on the end grain here. So on the two ends of the tail board, you have to leave space for two half pins. So I took this combination square and I set it to a little bit over an eighth of an inch, I guess. And I'm just going to mark onto the ends there. I always thought that there was some sort of magical math that got you to evenly space it out, but really it's just a guessing game. So you take some calipers and you don't stick them in and you just keep walking them until you get to the other side. Now you see that I'm all the way at the end there, but I don't want that. What I want is for the other end of these dividers to be about the same thickness and distance as this half pin so that it would create like a whole pin. So I'm gonna move this out like half from what I think that would be. And now I'm gonna need to try that again. That's too much. So this space over here is bigger than this quarter inch half pin that I made before. So now I'm gonna make this a little bit tighter, a little smaller. All right, so now it's perfectly set up. So when I start off on this line that was a quarter inch in from the end, and I go one, two. Now this little space over here is ex almost exactly the same width as the quarter inch uh, marking that I had over there. So this over here is creating a full pin. So now I did not dig in before. I just lightly went by. Now I'm gonna dig in the dividers. Dig in the divider. Now I'm gonna start from this end. Dig in the divider. And dig in the divider. 
now I can make my marks based on those holes that I had just made. I'm going to use a marking knife. So line it up, put it in the hole I made, scoot it over, and score it. So these dovetail jigs are super cool. They come in different ratios. So this one is an eight to one ratio, might be hard to see. And this one is a six to one. So the angles are completely built into the jig. It's all marked tails, pins, shoulder, pins. So for the tail side, this side of the jig is angled to create that correct ratio for the dovetails. And it has built-in magnets so that your saw sticks to it. And that way your saw is completely on the same angle that it's supposed to be for cutting dovetails. And then when you flip on over to cut the pins, the angle is built into the stem over here. So I'll show you guys that in a little bit. All right, so all you have to do is take your saw and line it up so that the side of the teeth are on the right side of your cut line. So you don't wanna be cutting into the tail at all. Everything wants to be cutting into the waist side. Establish a little bit of a cut there. Now I take the jig, put it on. Now, do you see how my saw just angled? So first I had it straight, and then as soon as I put the jig on there, it angled. Here goes nothing. So I'm good on this side. And I'm good, all right, pretty cool. All right, so what I think is pretty cool about this jig so far is that this cut is perfectly square across the board. So there's absolutely no way that I would have been able to make a square cut like that for my first time. I don't know, I guess we'll see after I do the cutting without the jig, but now after making this cut, I'm going to cut these sides and then I'm going to flip the board around and cut the other sides. All right, so that was super easy to do. Now I just need to clean up the waste using a coping saw. My coping saw skills need some work, but let's see how this goes. I just realized I should have, I wanna see the face <laughs> so that I don't cut into it. All right, take two. To clean up these two little ends, I'm going to once again use the dovetail jig. So what's pretty cool about it, it has a shoulder 90 degree end over there and you just have to line it up and then it will cut perfectly 90 across the end over there. So that's what I'm going to do. If I cut this well enough, it will. I will not need to clean it up with a chisel at all. So let's see if I can do it. will need to clean it up with a chisel. <laughs> All right, so pretty good. I actually dug into there a little bit, but that's okay because that is the back side and it won't be showing. Over here was good, so we're good to go over there. Now let me just cut the other side. Let's see if I can get this one on the line. It's pretty good. Now on to cleaning these up with a chisel. So what's actually cool about making that rabbit is also you can use it to guide your chisel perfectly straight. Also, I could use the jig to keep my chisel straight as well, which is pretty cool. All right, these are all clean, and now I'm just going to clean up the ends over here using the jig.
Tails are done, time to work on the pins. Because I made that rabbit in the beginning, it's going to be really easy to just line these two pieces up and it will reference that little lip over there and it'll be a positive stop to easily mark out for the pins. But because I love to make jigs, I decided to make uh, an alignment jig of sorts and I'm going to use that and clamp the pieces onto there to easily mark them out. So I wish that I had a vise to put this in, but I don't, so I'm going to have to clamp it down. So I just align these two pieces. The sides of these pieces are registering against here, and the top of this piece is registering against the rabbit. Before I move anything away, I should mark out my waist. I almost forgot to mark the depth of these. It's going to be the thickness of the tails. So you don't want to include that extra rabbit. It's not the thickness of the material, it's just the thickness of the tail part. Take the marking gauge. Now these aren't gonna go all the way around. So only on the front face and the back face, not on the sides here because these sides are going to be these pins that go in the side over here. All right, so I clamped it in the vise and now I'm going to use the other side of the jig. I'm going to use the pin side. So you can see when I put it against the board here, it's slightly skewed on an angle because of the angle in the stem over here and it matches the angle that I cut for the tails. So all I'm going to need to do is line up my saw, attach it with the magnets again and cut just like I did with the pins, I have the tails. Pins, let's do this. All right, pretty cool. On to the next one, line it up. All right, so before I clean anything up, I just wanna see how any, everything's gonna fit. All right, so this one over here, I see it's a little bit tight, and I see why, it's because I didn't actually saw onto my line. See, there's a line right in there, and I didn't actually cut it on the line. So I could actually use the jig to clean this up. After clamping the board back in, I could just use the jig with the pin face and I could line up my chisel. Take a bigger chisel, put that back in the wall there. Let's see how that's gonna fit. Oh yeah. All right, so for my first hand cut dovetails, I think that is pretty awesome. There are some few glaring mistakes. I went a little bit too far with the coping saw, if you can see right over there, and um, a few tiny little gaps here and there, but nothing a little sawdust and glue cannot fix. All right, now I'm going to cut some dovetails without using the jig. Let's see how that goes. Same process as before. I'm going to get the thickness of the material of the pins piece and then mark that on the end of the tail piece all the way around. And I'm gonna bring this over to the router table again to put that little rabbit in it. And now I'll do the same process as before to mark out for the tails. All right, I already noticed a difference. So if I were using the jig, I would be able to start cutting right away because the angle for the dovetails are already built into the jig. But now I have to figure out what angle I want to cut these at. So I'm gonna go figure that out and we'll come right back. All right, to figure out the same eight to one ratio that the jig has, 
I took a piece of MDF that I could just clearly see on and I marked one inch from the end. And now I'm gonna mark eight inches up from the side. And now I can put my ruler at those two points, strike a line. Then I could take this bevel and line that up. And just to test to see if that's the same, this is the tail's angle on here. And here, that's the same angle. I can mark out the angles. All right, here goes nothing. Totally on my line in the front, but not on my line in the back. So something's a little wonky there. I'm gonna try the smaller saw. Maybe I'll have more control. thought it would be but it's pretty bad so you can see right away how the angles are just off this angle that I cut for the pins is not the same angle as the tails and that's because I was just doing it by hand they're really not so horrible I mean these these ones are, are pretty decent this one's awful I think my chisel work got a little bit better really not so terrible except for this one over here. The difference between the two is pretty obvious. This was my first dovetail that I ever cut and this is my second one and my first one is better because I was using the jig. So the difference between the dovetails with the jig and without the jig I think is pretty obvious to me at least. You could see on this one on the end the angles are just completely off. And with these, the only mistakes that I made is really with the coping saw and the chisel. So I, that just means I need to practice more with my other tools. And that's actually why I think I love this jig. So with the one that I did not use the jig, the angles are just completely off between the pins and the tails. So any amount of chisel work and cleanup work that I'm going to do isn't really going to matter because the angles aren't correct. So the one that I use the jig, I know that the angles are perfect and all I have to do is learn to perfect my chiseling skills and then I can make beautiful looking dovetails. So I'm very happy and pleased with this experiment. This jig is awesome. Definitely check it out. It's linked down below and check out all of Jonathan Katzmose's videos. He is just a font of information and his videos on dovetails are just, they cannot be beat. He has so much information in there. Um, definitely go check those out. Thank you so much for sending this to me. And now if you guys wanna check out the Builders Challenge and sign up to build with us this season and you can challenge yourself and perhaps even try these dovetails for yourself. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.